This is the GP38 that I recently acquired. It's a USA Trains um, GP38, so-called GP38-2, but from what I've been able to study, it actually may be a regular GP38 because of the way the two separate radiators here, <coughs> or grill works, are there. At any rate, <coughs> I've tweaked it, modified it a little bit to make it more plausible. Among the things I've done was to uh, make these plugs in the front and rear to plug the gaping gap <coughs> since I converted to KD couplers. Uh, there was a large gap in there formerly <coughs> that, were, that were to accommodate the hook and loop couplers that the loco originally came with that they were mounted on. And uh, of course I used my custom uh, coupler boxes made by Datum Precision, their CNC metal uh, coupler boxes that I had made for many Aristocraft locomotives. So this is the first application that I tried it on the USA Trains uh, loco here. And in this case I ended up notching the about 110 thousandths down from the front and putting a notch to accommodate the coupler box. And, of course, the couplers I used were from a KD907 kit. I used the couplers and the springs and the lid. <clears throat> and, of course, used my metal uh, datum precision box. I also fabricated this little sloped thing here that's uh, more realistic, like the actual locomotive has. And I made it out of plastic that's 3 8 inch thick. And I cut a strip off and then made a diagonal cut <coughs> and uh, made those from that and painted it white <coughs> to match the pilot. And of course I converted to KDs as I've mentioned using the Datum Precision coupler boxes here and I drilled an additional hole further back about midpoint <coughs> and fabricated a spacer block and a base plate to replace the original drilled a hole and put a, a one inch um, button head screw from this box of screws I had and <coughs> I bought for another project. <coughs> and I also, uh, in addition to that, <coughs> you can see here, I, <coughs> I have fabricated these uh, Lexan spacers. They're about 90 thousandths or so thick and put them under each truck. I took the trucks off. <coughs> you have to take the shell off to do that. <coughs> and. In the rear, I, I, I also put these notches in the back to clear the screws that hold the shell on. And so that raised the locomotive up to a more realistic height. <clears throat> so, and in conjunction with that, I also raised or actually lowered the fuel tank by putting a, a 16th inch spacer. I happened to use a 256 uh, nut under the mounting points here, the, this point and this point and I also drilled and tapped a hole here you have to do it very shallow because you'll break through the catwalk if you're not careful uh, that used to be a guide plastic guide pin that busted off <clears throat> so I just drilled it out and put an additional three point mount or third point mount screw so and while I was at it I changed the traction tires on this axle and on this axle Nick Savotky gave me the, these uh, solid wheels <coughs> as replacements and they're new and uh, I thought I'd try it. In fact that's what prompted me to to buy my first USA Trains uh, four axle loco which is this GP38 here. Having raised up the GP38 as I've described uh, and I based it on uh, looking it up in books as to uh, uh, what the distance should be from the railhead uh, here you can see on my upper, my test track here up in my loft, I have a level here <coughs> and uh, it shows two locos, the, the USA Trains GP38 on the left and the Aristo GP40 on the right. <coughs> and the level is, looks pretty, the bubble here looks level here on the track. <coughs> and if I compare the noses of the two units, you can see that the levels are pretty close, so the Aristo unit was uh, pretty much on from what I could tell from looking up the specs in the book again. <clears throat> and if I look at the cab, the cab is reasonably close. It's maybe a touch a little low on the USA Trains unit, but up here where the book indicates the extremity, which was the reference in my Burlington Northern book on GP38s to measure it to the, from the railhead, 
they call this part the extremity, <coughs> the most extreme part of the loco that they measured. <coughs> and the two brands here are now uh, look pretty pretty identical. The bubble here looks to be level. And so, as it turns out, the Aristo units seem to be pretty pretty spot on from the measurements in the book. <coughs> and now the GP38 um, is, since I raised it up, <coughs> by putting the Lexan spacers under the truck, there's about 60,000. So while I was at it, I lowered the fuel tank here, uh, about <coughs> 60,000. <coughs> and and uh, again, the Lexan space is about 90,000. I might have misspoken. It's about 90,000 thick. <coughs> so that made the loco raised up pretty good and of course the reason I had to do it was the wheels are very small in this USA Trains look at the diameter of the wheels and if it had the correct scaled wheels uh, I wouldn't have had to have uh, raised this thing up like that but this is sort of a compromise so again I'm pretty happy how it turned out it's the way it looks loco happens to weigh 7.9 pounds uh, with everything with all the railings installed now <coughs> The Aristo Loco, I had added two pounds to it, so it's 11 and a half pounds. So the Aristo will probably uh, pull this thing, <coughs> and particularly since I took the traction tires off, which I prefer to do. I'd rather have the wheels slip and, and as a fail-safe to not burn motors out and multiple the units, uh, you know, more, more Locos to pull a heavy train. Now here are the two Locos coupled back to back. The USA trains, one the GP38 on the right, and the Aristo. GP40 on the left, and having raised up the <coughs> GP38 to a more prototypical height, uh, they, they they look quite uh, compatible together here. If I run the two locos together, the, the <coughs> GP38 will run faster than the Aristo GP40, as can be seen here. So they're not really compatible together, but if they were to be coupled together without having the traction tires <coughs> basically stall out the GP38. Now here's the GP38 <coughs> with a USA Trains SD70. I have two of these Southern Pacific SD70s and now this one USA Trains GP38 so that's three USA Trains locos I have now. And these two will seemingly work together a little bit better than the Aristo, although the SD70 actually runs faster than the GP38 as can be seen here as it's separating somewhat in distance. But since neither of these locos have traction tires uh, as a failsafe, I think I'll try to run these on a test train and I think they'll be okay together. Um, they seem much more compatible than trying to run it with an Aristo loco. And I'm operating them on using an Aristo train engineer but in DC, DC mode not pulse with control. Now here's the USA trains two locos coupled together, the GP38 and the SD70 and I'll run them on the test track here and you can see the coupler action there they both have KDs in this case the GP30 is kind of pushing the SD70 I say that in quotes because <coughs> it's not really capable of pushing it <coughs> and now it's <coughs> Pulling, pulling it. Here is a 62 car train with two USA Trains brand SD70s on the front and the Rock Island GP38 as the third unit. This is not a prototypical flash up, of course, <clears throat> but uh, since I only have three USA Trains locos, these ones here. Uh, this is what's going to have to do for the test train. And we can see the coupler action here on the GP38 with its datum precision coupler box. And on the front of the unit versus the first car. 
This is coming around my 10 foot loop back, which is the most stressful point of the layout. Mm -hmm. And of course, none of these USA trains have traction tires. Uh, the two SD70s I bought is precisely because the USA trains decided to sell them without traction tires. <clears throat> I'd much rather have the wheels slip as a fail safe. And uh, maybe you have to MU more locomotives to pull a train. <clears throat> and the GP38, I retrofitted. Um, regular axles with uh, smooth wheels. Um, we got rid of the traction tires. <laughs> Here's the same train coming through my west bay of the layout. <laughs> There's the GP38. It's in the last Rock Island Blue scheme before they went bankrupt and were liquidated in April 1980. Of course, that's why it's not appropriate for the lash up with these much newer SD70s as far as a prototype goes. Here's the train once again coming around my 207 degree 10 foot diameter loop back. And the power supply is a Ristocraft train engineer here, the <coughs> trackside receiver, one of the newest model they offered before they stopped selling them. And it's set on linear mode. And here's the GP38. And again, I raised the GP38 up because it has tiny wheels, or they're non prototypical. They'd scale out to about 32 inches, where the SD70 is fairly accurate for its wheel size. So I put Lexan spacers up here underneath each truck and raised the unit up to be more prototypical in the height. I also put plugs where the gaping slot was in the, in the front and rear pilots, uh, since the loco came equipped with hook and loop couplers and uh, they needed the wide mouth in order for the coupler to swing. And I suppose that's to go around a Christmas tree, <laughs> something like a two-foot radius <clears throat> or less. Here's the train once again on my 270-degree, 10-foot diameter loop back. You can see the outside view of the coupler action between the trailing SD70 and the GP38. The SD70s <coughs> I've adapted um, uh, medium offset uh, KD couplers. I think there were 787s. Uh, and uh, I adapted the blocks to swing inside the, uh, the pilot housing. Mm -hmm. The GP38 didn't need to have that done, of course, because <coughs> it doesn't have the nose overhang. And uh, I used uh, datum precision. Um, CNC machined coupler boxes I had made for me actually for use on Aristocraft GP40 SD45 9s E8s and those locos, and I successfully mounted them on this GP38 here. Here's the train in the West Bay once again. Perhaps you can hear a slight vibration from the SD70. It's actually coming from the slider shoes <coughs> that uh, are vibrating on the brass rail. The GP38 doesn't seem to be doing that. And, and I retained the slider shoes because of the issue of uh, possible wheel pitting due to high, uh, high initial currents when these locos are started out. <coughs> Here's the train coming through the middle bay. the SD70s and the SD70 and GP38 coupler and the GP38 in the loading of the train here, the first car. And there you have it.